believing in God can't be exactly the same thing as believing in the Loch Ness Monster or chocolate pudding. It would be silly to use sonar or radar to try and find direct traces of God in the universe. That's because God, if he is real at all, is independent from the universe. Looking for God inside the universe would be like looking for a software engineer inside of a computer. This is why science can't directly prove or disprove God. If we are going to believe that God is real, we need to approach the question from a broader perspective. The evidence for God is going to be more like the evidence for someone standing around the corner of a building. Their protruding shadow stretches out on the pavement in front of us, but the shadow itself isn't the living person. Instead, it's indirect evidence that a person is standing just out of view. Similarly, certain extraordinary phenomena in philosophy, in history, and in science provide indirect evidence for God. This evidence, like a protruding shadow, infers that an extraordinary being, what we call God, stands around the corner of our known universe. Nevertheless, few people commit to belief in this God based solely on the indirect evidence. This is true even for people who concede that the evidence itself makes a reasonable case for God. For example, the world's most famous atheist, Dr. Richard Dawkins, says one could make a reasonably respectable case for the deist God. Not one that I would accept, but I think it's a serious discussion that we could have. Dawkins admits that there is serious weight to this argument, but then drops the weight on the floor. So if this indirect evidence alone doesn't usually persuade people to believe, what kind of evidence is usually added to tip the scales toward real belief? We take that question up in part two.